Today, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to kayak fish La Jolla. Let's go. All right, guys, first things first, you're absolutely going to need a fishing license. And when it comes to gear, I would recommend starting with three rods. One sabiki rod, one rod rigged for fly line, and one rod rigged for bass fishing. After you get comfortable out there, I would say go ahead and start adding more arrows to your quiver. You could bring a sabiki rod, a bass rod, a rod rigged up for fly line, one for dropper loop, and one rigged up with an iron to throw in case you see some boils. But until you're comfortable out there, I recommend starting with just the three basic rods. To get to La Jolla, take the 5 to La Jolla Parkway. The exit is here. Take La Jolla Parkway down to Calle de la Plata and go right. This is the next segment of the map I'll be showing you. Follow Calle de la Plata down until it dead ends into some local shops. That is Avenida de la Plata. Go left. You will follow Avenida de la Plata to the beach. As soon as you see the sand, you will notice a cement triangle in front of you. You want to enter the beach to the right of that triangle, unload your yak, and leave the beach to the right of the triangle. Meaning, when you enter the beach, the cement triangle will be on your driver's side, and when you leave the beach, the cement triangle will be on your driver's side. After you unload your kayak, you'll want to go park. You'll want to make your first left, leaving the beach. You can either park on the street, or about 150 to 200 yards down on the left, there's a large parking lot. I highly recommend checking the conditions before you go to La Jolla. If you don't know how to check the conditions, I'll show you right now. This is tideforecast.com and I have it on my home screen on my phone. The first thing you're checking for is to see if it's even capable to launch. The next thing you're checking for is to see if it's going to be an awesome day or if it's gonna suck. For launching, the two things you're going to be concerned with are wave periods and wave height. Height is self-explanatory and periods mean how fast the intervals are in between the waves. So let's take a look at what we've got here. If we look at Monday at 1 a.m., wave height is 3 feet, period is 8 seconds. So what that means is you're going to have 3 foot sets coming at you and when it stops, you're going to have 8 seconds to get in your boat and get out there because the sets are going to start coming again. But that's if you're launching at 1 a.m. You'll probably be launching closer to 6 or 7, so let's take a look at that. Wave height, 2 feet, periods, 14 seconds. That's golden. That means you're going to have 2 foot or less waves coming at you, and whenever it stops, you're going to have about 14 seconds to get in your yak and get on out there. So that's Amazing, that's great. Doesn't get much better than that. A huge period, small wave, you're good. Now let's look at the wind. Guys, my rule of thumb for the wind is, once it hits double digits, I check multiple sites because 10 or 11 or 12, I'll go out in. Um, if it's 14, 15, 16, there's no point. It's not fun. 11 or 12 miles an hour is about as much wind as I will go out in. And in this case, Monday and Tuesday look great. Five miles an hour, it looks like it may pick up for a little bit on Monday in the late afternoon. For me to you fellas, Monday the 23rd and Tuesday the 24th look great. Unfortunately, Monday the 23rd is today. All right guys, this is very important. There are two preserves you need to know about. Where you just drove onto the beach and launched from is right here. You need to pedal out past this green line because everything before that green line all the way up to the beach is a no-take zone. You can catch absolutely nothing. You cannot have a pole in the water. If you don't have a fish finder that shows you the exact line you need to cross, there is a helpful trick so you can know when you're out of the protected area. As you're cruising out, you'll notice a lone American flag on the top of a building to your left. You will also see some palm trees. When you are right about here, you will see one main palm tree and the American flag lining up. When they're lined up, you are out of the preserve. The other preserve you need to worry about is here. 
This one starts at Scripps Pier and goes north. This is not a no-take zone. Here you are allowed to take fin bait, meaning greenback mackerel, Spanish mackerel, and sardines. So a lot of guys go over here to catch bait. A lot of times I go over here to catch bait because they hang around Scripps Pier and you can catch bait very easily. Before I tell you guys exactly where the squid are and how to catch them, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like the video. This is years of knowledge that I'm putting on this video. And the only thing I ask in return is just support me a little bit. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, share it with some friends who might be interested in fishing La Jolla. And that's it. That's all I'm asking for, guys. Literally a couple of thumb presses, so hook me up. You guys are going to love this because once I tell you, you'll never forget. All you have to do to catch the squid is launch straight out from La Jolla Shores and go directly across the boundary line for the preserve, that green line, and directly after the preserve line in 70 to 90 feet of water, that's where the squid bed. They like it when it's 68 degrees in the springtime. So in the spring when the water hits 68 degrees, I literally go to 70 to 90 feet of water directly across the preserve line drop my sabiki all the way to the bottom, lift it up to where the weight is barely on the bottom, and just give it light six to 12 inch jerks up and down slowly, and you won't feel them hit. You'll feel the sabiki load up. It won't be a strike like a, like a fish. It will just be that the sabiki gets slightly heavier. That's the secret to your uh, squid, guys. 70 to 90 feet of water directly across the preserve line when the water hits 68 degrees. Boom. All right, guys, I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. I already have a great Landing La Jolla Shores tutorial video out here. So I'm just gonna attach that to the end of this one and you can see how to land. The swell comes from the Southwest most of the time. That's why I always come in next to the swimming area. The point protects the launch area. So the further you are in the corner, the smaller the swell so the smaller the waves. Here you can see the point over my right hand shoulder to give you guys an idea of what the bearings are like after looking at the map. The important thing I want you to recognize here is that I'm coming into the beach at a 45 degree angle. You don't ever want to start off going right into the beach without timing the sets and seeing what kind of intervals you're dealing with. The reason I'm at a 45 degree angle is because at any given moment, you may need to turn seaward to avoid getting splashed by some sets. It only takes two sets to splash you, and sometimes one. If you have your bow pointed directly at the beach, what will happen is one set will come behind you and push your kayak towards the beach, and it will not go directly at the beach. It will be kicked off to one side or the other, and then another set will come and flip your kayak completely. When you land at a 45 degree angle, it's a lot easier to turn seaward and take those sets head on like you see me doing right here versus facing the beach and trying to turn 180 degrees so you don't get pushed from behind and then flipped. Here's where I notice a small window between sets, so I know that means it's time to head in. And unfortunately, I started heading towards the beach and got turned a little cockeyed. I should have been uh, going more left, but I'm looking behind me and watching the sets. Here comes one, time to jump out. I jump out and uh, grab the back of my boat, which is very important. Don't ever go to the front of your boat because see that surge of that uh, wave pushing the boat forward? If you're in the front of the boat, when that surge comes, it's stronger than you are, and there's a good chance it's going to knock you over. You follow these easy guidelines, you should be okay to uh, launch and land La Jolla, no problem. If you're wanting to book a trip to La Jolla to chase some of these donkey yellowtail, I would consider getting on it. Because once the spots are gone, they're gone. <laughs>